Hello everyone, my name is Sydney and I am a sport nutritionist from the Canadian Sport Institute of Ontario and welcome to module 3 where we will be talking all about recovery nutrition. So the agenda for this module includes talking about the three R's for recovery. We'll talk about how we know how much to include for recovery. We'll review some of the sources of carbohydrates and proteins. And we're also going to talk about whole versus engineered or sport foods. So why is recovery so important? Well, making sure that we get a good balance of our nutrients and vitamins and fluids will allow for our tissues and our muscles to repair adequately from our training sessions. And this can then allow our muscles and our body to adapt to our training sessions as they might increase in load and intensity. It can help to boost our immune system. Optimal recovery can prevent injury as well as fatigue. And making sure that we're getting enough through our nutrition helps to make sure that we get enough of our important nutrients such as calcium, B12, iron, sodium and potassium that can help to prevent injury as well as prevent fatigue. So the easiest way to think about your recovery nutrition is to remember the three R's. The first R standing for refuel. And here we want to focus on our carbohydrate rich foods. As we've talked about in the previous module, these are our macronutrients that provide us with that energy to recharge and replenish our energy stores after a training session. The second R stands for rebuild. And this is where we focus on our protein rich foods to give our muscles that, that ability to recover and repair from our training session. And then the last R stands for rehydrate. And here we wanna focus on our fluids to replace our fluids that we lost uh, maybe through sweating during our training session. And if you can think of refueling as, it's essentially the same as fueling, but it's just done after our training session. And this allows us to get our fuel back and replenish our body before our next training session. So it's the same as fueling before, it just happens after. And with the idea of recovering rather than fueling or preparing for training. So we've already talked about our carbohydrates and rehydration, so our fluids, is a very important topic. So we will actually talk about this in an entire module dedicated to hydration. So I'm not going to go into too much detail around fluids today, but remember it is quite an important topic. We're going to focus on our protein in this module. So we're going to focus on the rebuilding section. So protein is important for rebuilding, but I want to spend a minute here just showing you that if we combine our protein with a carbohydrate after training, then we can actually optimize our recovery and our rebuilding. So it's not just protein, but it's all about adding in that carb in uh, with the protein for refueling. So remember that we don't want to have the protein instead of the carb. We actually want it in addition to our carbohydrate. So to explain this further, I'll direct you to this graph here. And we can see that on the left hand side, we see this measure called FSR. And this means fractional synthetic rate. This, in other words, it just means muscle repair. So this is the rebuilding or the repair that we've been talking about. Then we can see that we compare a low carb intake and a high carb intake in the white and the gray bars. And we notice that there really is no difference in terms of the amount of muscle repair. However, when we look at the gray or sorry, the black bar, where we combine protein with carbohydrate, you notice that the asterisks above the bar there shows that we see 
a way more, way higher FSR or muscle repair rate once we combine the protein and carbohydrates. So the key takeaway here is that we want to combine our protein and our carbohydrate foods as our recovery after training. The next step that we can take is to determine how much protein we're going to need after training. So now that we know we need protein with some carbohydrates after training in order to achieve that optimal recovery, we can start to think about how much or what this is going to look like in terms of quantity on your plate. So this graph here, it shows again the same FSR on the left. So that's the measure of our muscle repair. And on the bottom axis, this shows four different doses of whey protein. And this is a really common type of protein that's found in milk. And we can see that this green arrow highlights that recovery actually improves with increasing amounts of protein. So our recovery or our muscle repair gets better as we increase that amount of protein we eat after. And to take this one step further, the white bars show a, a rested measure or a, a day that this person is not exercising. So it measures the muscle repair on a rest day. Whereas the black bars show muscle repair on a training day. And we can see that muscle repair is higher after training because, and this makes sense, training or exercise works the muscle and it, it does some damage to our muscle um, fibers. So the act of exercising or training actually signals our body and it tells it to build muscle. And really this is how we're gonna get stronger and, and bigger and faster over time as we train. So we get more muscle repair on those days, our exercise days, than when we're resting um, because that training causes that damage. So this green rectangle highlights that on the rest days, whether it's the 20 grams of protein or the 40 grams of protein, our muscle repair rate, it doesn't change with the higher intake of protein. However, the higher dose of the 40 grams of protein on the training day in the black bar there, it's better than, it's better for repair than the 20 grams. So the key thing here to remember is that protein needs are going to be higher on training days than on rest days. So if we, we're going to need more protein for recovery after training versus if we're just having a rest day. So if we translate this information to what this might look like on our plates, it might be a good idea to include you know, a minimum of about 20 grams of protein for a rest day, but on our training days, we know that optimal recovery would then be seen at around 20, minimum up to maybe 40 grams of protein. So aiming for 20 grams of protein on rest days and anywhere between 20 to 40 grams of protein on training days is going to help optimize your recovery. Now that we know how much protein we might need after training, Let's review some protein sources so that we have a better idea of what this might look like in terms of food on our plate. And as we re review these sources, keep in mind that as we go from left to right on the screen, I'll start with the higher density protein sources and move towards the lower density sources. So another way to think about this uh, is that the foods on the left hand side of the screen will have more protein per serving. They're going to be a higher source of protein versus the foods on the right hand side of the screen, they're gonna have less protein per serving or a lower source of protein. It doesn't mean that the protein sources are better than the other, just might mean that they provide different amounts of protein. So starting with animal-based products, 
These might include things like our chicken, turkey, red meat, pork, fish, seafood, and things like that. And these sources will have about 20 grams of protein per serving. And to give you an idea of what a serving would look like, look at the at your palm of your hand. It's about that size or a size of deck of cards. This would give you about three ounces um, and that would give you about 20 grams of protein or this would make up about a quarter of your plate if you think back to those balanced plates. Now that there, there are other animal-based protein sources, so things like our eggs, milk, and cheese, and they might not have as much protein as the others per serving, but they're still a really great option. So these sources might only include about six to seven grams of protein per serving, so uh, that would be maybe about one ounce of cheese, one cup of milk, or one egg. But some people will have a couple of eggs in one meal just to help reach maybe the 15, 16, 70 grams, 17 grams of protein. And it's important to note that although we might not reach that, that goal we have of 20 to 40 grams of protein with these sources, um, we might not reach them alone, so it's a good idea to think about mixing and matching some of these sources to help get us there. So for example, instead of having one liter of milk, maybe combining one cup of milk with some Greek yogurt, maybe a couple of scrambled eggs with some shredded cheese on top, that would certainly get you over and above the 20 grams of protein. And then on the right hand side, we have more of our plant-based sources, which are still really good sources of protein. However, they might not give you as much protein per serving if we compare them to the animal sources. So we may have to eat more of these or mix and match in order to reach our protein goals. So some of the examples of plant-based protein sources include our nuts and seeds, our whole seeds, our nut butters, our beans and legumes, black beans, chickpeas, lentils, as well as some of our soy foods like tofu, tempeh, and edamame. So just keep in mind that all of these protein sources are great options. However, they do differ in terms of how much protein per serving they're going to provide. So we may need to mix and match different sources in order to reach your goals of protein for recovery. And to give you a better idea of what 15 to 20 grams of protein might look like with our different sources, um, we can go through the following pictures here. So for example, for fish, 90 grams or three ounces of cooked fish would get us that 15 to 20 grams. Same thing with our chicken, a small can of tuna, and then as we look at some of our other protein sources, our milk, our cheese, and our yogurt will require a little bit more. So we might need maybe two cups of milk or three ounces of cheese or a three quarter cup of yogurt in order to get that 15 to 20 grams. And then our eggs, we might need to mix two, maybe even three eggs um, within one meal to reach that protein goal. And then with our plant-based sources, we'll need a larger portion for example, uh, two thirds of a cup of nuts or seeds or one to one and a half cups of legumes to reach that 15 to 20 grams. So thinking again of combining or the importance of combining protein and carbohydrate together, we can look at this graph, this graph here. On the left axis, we see glycogen storage. So this is really just our energy stores. This is where our body stores its energy. And think of this as the refueling part of recovery. So if we look at the black bar in the green box there, we're combining again that protein with carbohydrate. And if we compare that to the gray or the white bars, we compare that to carbohydrate alone. So whether it's the high carbohydrate or low carbohydrate, 
and this is comparing the glycogen storage for recovery. So the important thing to note is that the energy or the refueling and storage is better when we combine our carbohydrates with our proteins. And protein actually has a carb sparing effect and this means that when we add protein with our carbohydrates, it not only optimizes repair, but it's also going to optimize that refueling. So again, this just shows the importance of combining our carbohydrates with our proteins to help refuel as well as rebuild after training. So just to review some of our sources of carbohydrate, as we know they're important for refueling, We'll go through some of our good options and I won't focus too much on quantity because this is something that's very individualized. Each athlete, you're going to need different amounts depending on the type of the length of your session. So ultimately just remember that the more you train, the more carbs you're going to need to refuel. So as a tip with our carbohydrates, for recovery, we really want to focus on those good quality sources of carbs. So these are our starchy foods like our whole grains, our cereals, starchy vegetables, beans and legumes, as well as our fruit. And that's because they're going to have some good fiber and some of those smaller mi micronutrients like our vitamins and minerals. And these are, we know they're important for our overall health. Now dairy and our added sugars, they're going to have some of our carbs as well. So especially dairy, we've got a little bit of natural sugars, but we're going to have a little bit more if we have flavored dairy products. Now these are also carbohydrate sources, but it is a good idea to limit these as they aren't as healthy as some of the other sources of carbs. So it's a good idea to focus on our starches and our fruits most often, but it's certainly okay to include some of those flavored dairy and added sugars occasionally um, and especially, you know, we may need some of these coming from our sports foods or engineered foods, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the key here is to really focus on the majority of our recovery foods coming from our starches and our fruits. So I want you to think back to our sport nutrition pyramid, where we talked about building up that foundation with our whole foods. Um, so this applies to not only our meals, but also with our recovery foods. Um, and once we have this really strong, solid foundation, then we can look at layering on top of that with our sports foods or engineered foods during certain situations that might be helpful. Um, and then our other layer, the very top layer, the supplements there, like our creatine or caffeine, we know that they're not going to help with that nutritional recovery. So we won't think about these ones. We really want to focus that focus on and remember that our recovery nutrition really does come from our whole foods, our proteins, carbs, and fluids, and sometimes as well, some of those sport foods or those engineered foods. Let's do a nutrition comparison to see which ones might be the better option. So we'll compare whole food versus an engineered food or a sport food supplement. So we'll use protein powder as our comparison. And I've chosen this because a lot of athletes will rely on this because it's convenient, it's a quick snack, it's portable, it won't go bad, it doesn't need to be refrigerated, which is fair. Um, but I'll compare this to another whole food snack that doesn't have to be refrigerated either. So something like a peanut butter sandwich with nut butter, some honey, maybe a banana on the side, and a milk called UHT milk. So all this means is that it's an ultra high temperature. So this product has been pasteurized at a really high temperature so that it's shelf stable, meaning that you don't need to refrigerate it. You can keep it in your bag or um, outside of the fridge and it won't go bad you won't get sick from it. You can find these in juice box forms as a plain milk or soy milk option as well. And really this is just to show you that that whole food options for our nutrition recovery are going to optimize our recovery better than an engineered food or a sports supplement. 
And you'll see here that they're quite comparable in terms of their protein if we compare their nutrition facts. The carbohydrates, you'll get a mu much more from the whole foods option. However, you might be thinking, well, maybe I can combine a Gatorade um, and have that with my protein powder to help reach my carbohydrates targets. And you might, uh, you might even be able to reach that 300 milligrams in sodium. However, you won't, you won't be reaching the potassium, certainly won't be getting as much calcium um, or as much iron from the protein powder supplement as we would from that whole food, um, from this sandwich, the banana and the chocolate milk. So by now you're pretty confident knowing that whole foods should be part of our foundation. They need to form the basis of our nutrition and this applies to not only our meals but our recovery snacks as well. If you try to take advantage of having whole foods for recovery versus sport foods or engineered foods, it's going to help give you that extra edge up over someone who might rely more on the engineered food only. They're, only, they're going to be missing out on some of those micronutrients that we know are very important. So verdict, both are options, but whole foods that are going to contain our proteins, our carbohydrates, our fluids, all in the right quantities, are going to be the best for optimizing recovery. Here are the key takeaways for this module. First, we want to remember those three R's for recovery, and this includes refuel, rebuild, and rehydrate. Next, we want to include protein plus carbohydrate for recovery, as this is key for optimal re muscle repair and energy storage. After a training session, we want to aim to have 20 to 40 grams of protein in our meal or our snack. And finally, our recovery meals and snacks should be primarily made up of our whole foods. And with that, we are at the end of this module. Please see the attached assignment and quiz to complete, and then I will see you in the next one.